Uh, at tonight's briefing, uh, we're going to have Summit County Sheriff uh, Jamie Fitzsimons. Um, we're also going to have the incident commander of the Ptarmigan Fire, Eric White, uh, who is the uh, Type 3 incident commander on this uh, matter, and uh, County Commissioner Josh Blanchard talking. Um, in addition, um, we have uh, Summit Fire and EMS uh, Deputy Chief John Wilkerson uh, available, uh, as well as Dillon District Ranger Adam Bianchi, if we've got questions. Um, a couple of little things uh, to note. Um, we will be operating our public information hotline um, until 8 p.m. tonight. That number is 970-668-9700. Um, please continue to follow the social media of any of the organizations represented here, Summit Fire and EMS, the Sheriff's Department, Summit County Government, um, the Town of Silverthorne, uh, the White River National Forest. All of us are uh, posting information and it's unified information so that you don't have to follow all of us. You can just follow one. Um, and um, finally, uh, uh, we're going to have um, uh, Eric Ayala here uh, offering our Spanish translation for tonight. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me bring up Sheriff Fitzsimons, uh, and then um, we will do translations. Awesome. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want to translate what I just said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sí, buenas tardes para todos los que están en sintonía en, para esta reunión de información. Este, quien estaba hablando es Steve, Steve Lipor con los bomberos. También va a estar hoy presente Eric White, que nos va a ayudar. También Josh Blanchard, que va a estar hablando acerca de lo, de lo, lo que está aconteciendo hoy. Este, vamos a tener, si tienen una pregunta, nuevamente les vamos a dar el número de teléfono para nuestra línea directa, que es el 970. 668-9700. También, por favor, sigan todas las redes sociales de, que se han estado dando durante el día y, y durante las diferentes uh, reuniones que hemos tenido. También el pueblo de Silverton, uh, los bomberos y para nuevamente para más información, el 970-668-9700. Good evening, everybody. Oh, hang on. Good evening, everybody. Uh, is it easier for me just to talk or do you, yes? Okay. Okay, good evening. Thank you uh, again for, uh, you know, allowing us uh, to uh, get this fire uh, safely at least fought and uh, showing us some grace and some and room to do this. Uh, what it, that has done is it's allowed me to, to, to read you this statement that I've prepared. And the reason why I want to read it is because you're going to get it on your phone. And I want to make sure that you hear it from me. Summit County Sheriff is going to lift the evacuation order for Hamilton Creek and Angler Mountain. Uh, it'll be lifted and reduced to pre-evacuation status effective 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, Thursday. Uh all other areas in the pre-evacuation status will remain in pre-evacuation status. You guys will also, Angler Mountain and Hamilton Creek will then go into pre-evacuation status. This change is based on ground and aerial assessments of the fire activity, as well as the work of firefighters were able to complete on the ground Wednesday, today. Uh, while the Tarmigan fire st uh, still poses a risk, the Summit County Sheriff and fire officials do not feel the risk warrants keeping people out of their homes. Uh, provided they remain alert and ready to evacuate on short notice should conditions change. The rain does not extinguish the fire, but has helped reduce fire activity, which allowed firefighters to make good progress building containment lines. Until further notice, only credentialed residents will be allowed back in the area to support the safety of the continuing firefighting efforts. Credentialing of residents will continue tonight and also tomorrow morning and Friday morning between the hours of 8 and 11 a.m. So like I said, again, it was important for me to read that to you because you're gonna get it on your phone and I wanted you to hear it 
from me first. So just to go over this again, so I, I'm going to lift this evacuation order for everybody tomorrow. But that, then, that puts everybody in pre-evacuation status. So those that are in pre-evacuation will remain. And those of you that are coming out of mandatory evacuation will go into pre-evacuation. Um, this will happen at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, at that time, credential residents can go to those two points you went to this morning, and you'll be about allowed back in your homes. Um, obviously, I'm only allowing credential residents back in there now uh, due to the ongoing safety concerns, firefighting efforts, equipment in the area. Uh, we still need a, we still need allow to allow fire crews to move in and around your homes and around those streets uh, uninterrupted. Um, so, um, you know, I, I'm just reading some notes I made to myself. I'm asking you to please remain in and around your homes. Don't, don't go out on the fire lines. Don't engage the firefighters. Uh, don't stop fire trucks and ask questions. Uh, that fire is still active. It's still burning. Uh, like I said, when we all got together uh, between uh, Eric White, the incident commander, and, and Adam Bianchi, uh, my partner in this, you know, we decided that it's safe enough to let you back home, but that doesn't mean to start wandering into the fire lines or, or stopping some of these fire crews. It's still imperative that we continue to fight this fire, right? We got that, right? Awesome. Um, also, uh, this will be the last public meeting we'll do unless there's some significant change on that fire. So just to be clear, I'm going to cancel all future public meetings as of tonight. Uh, and if something changes, I will send out over social media. You'll hear it over, I should say, everybody's social media. Again, there is no wrong uh, social media to follow, but you will hear that there's a, a new public meeting uh, and some, some drastic change. So you'll continue to see, as I had mentioned before, aerial activity as well, which is why we can't have uh, non-residents wandering around those streets and impeding uh, firefighting efforts. So, was that was that enough? <laughs> oh, I stow this upon you, my friend. Nuevamente quiero aclarar que voy a estar dando un resumen de lo que este jefe de policía acaba de decir, Jamie Gibson. Este, bueno. Lo que él estaba diciendo es que gracias otra vez por dejarnos que peleemos por la seguridad en este incendio. Este, gracias por la cooperación que ha tenido la gente en lo que se ha estado haciendo. Uh, lo importante aquí es que se va a levantar lo que es la evacuación en Hamilton Creek y eso va a pasar mañana a las 10 de la mañana. A todas las personas ya pueden regresar. Esto es en base a la actividad de los bomberos. Entonces, vamos a estar en en lo que es la pre evacuación y la, el otro punto es de que la lluvia este, nos ha ayudado pero pero no extinguió completamente el fuego está ayudando también las temperaturas ayudaron este eso ayudó a contener las líneas de fuego <coughs> mañana todo esto va a estar por escrito ustedes lo van a recibir en un mensaje en, en sus celulares pero él quería el jefe de policía quería que ustedes lo escucharan primeramente de él, que él, que él lo estaba diciendo antes de que le llegue a sus, a sus teléfonos. Este, nuevamente, las, las personas pueden regresar a sus hogares a, con sus credenciales. Todavía necesitamos que los grupos de, de, que están peleando contra el incendio se mantengan en esa área. Entonces, lo que se les pide es que por favor mantengan su distancia, a, ayuden a que el trabajo sea este fluido que no estén preguntando parando a los que son los, los también de bomberos haciendo preguntas y que dejen hacer el, el trabajo porque esta mañana estuvieron ahí y vieron de que el, el, el incendio todavía no está completamente contenido bueno fue una, una poca parte de que se ha contenido el incendio otra cosa importante es de que hoy va a ser la última reunión informativa que se va a hacer ya mañana en adelante ya no van a haber más más este reuniones informativas Para eso, por favor, siga um, las redes sociales que se les han estado dando. Este, van a ver todavía las aeronaves, los helicópteros y los aviones todavía pasando um, en el área. Así que 
la actividad del, de los bomberos todavía no va a parar para, para poder terminar con seguir luchando contra el incendio. Well, following on that uh, bit of uh, good news, uh, Eric White, our uh, incident commander for the fire. Thank you, Steve, and good evening, everybody. Uh, pleasure to be here talking to you tonight. Um, so as Sheriff Fitzsimons mentioned, we had a really good day out there today. Um, how that day started, uh, it started with myself, my operations section chief, and some other fire line person, one other fire line personnel, taking a recon flight by helicopter. We were able to, we had clear enough and smooth enough air that we were able to get up, spend a lot of time over the fire this morning, really start to evaluate the true risk to firefighters on the ground. Um, after doing that, we're able to determine that we can, in fact, engage firefighters directly onto the fire line. Um, it's not to say there's not risk to firefighters. The risk is still there. It's just not quite as much as what we thought. So what that means is we're going to get in. We're going to continue to engage, but it's going to be a slow process. As we start to engage firefighters, we're going to be cutting a lot of trees. Um, as trees begin to burn out, they become unstable and they can fall at a moment's notice. Trees kill firefighters every year. Um, we do not want that to happen on this fire. We're going to take our time. We're going to mitigate those hazards. We're going to come in behind those sawyers, those people cutting the trees. We're going to drag our hands through the black, make sure there's no heat in there, and then we'll start calling contain. Based on what we saw, however, we're pretty comfortable that, you know, the, the western edge of the fire above the communities is, is, is looking quite good. Um, I'm not saying that all risk, all potential for further evacuation or anything of that nature is out of the question, uh, but we're feeling pretty comfortable that we're not going to be there. Um, so we do ask that you remain alert, remain ready to go just in the event that something unforeseen happens. So in terms of what actually happened today, after we were able to get the recon, talk to the folks on the ground, they did a little foot recon to determine that they felt safe because they're the ones doing the work, right? So we need to make sure that they feel comfortable with the assignment. Uh, so they were able to walk the entire perimeter of the fire today. Um, there are pockets of, of a lot of work and, and some other areas of less work. So it's going to move faster in some areas and, and not so fast in others. Um, and in terms of actual accomplishment today, we had firefighters uh, up this drainage, about halfway up the plank. Um, they were able to cold trail, which is uh, a term for what I mentioned earlier, actually dragging your hand through the, the, where the area that's already been burned, ensuring there's no heat in there. Uh, when you can do that, you don't actually need to dig line, remove all the fuels from the outside of the fire. That burned area uh, relies as its own fuel break. Um, so they made it all the way down around the corner um, in, in a combination of that cold trail that I just mentioned and also digging fire line, removing all the fuels from the advancement of the fire. They made it. So, well, they actually made it almost all the way up here. Uh, so a lot of really good hard work was accomplished today. Um, so as I said, they, they scouted the remainder of the fire. As we start to turn these flanks and move towards the upper edge of the fire, there's a lot more tree hazard up there. Um, a lot more snags, it's gonna go a lot slower. Um, so you're gonna see a number of things in the coming days. Um, as Sheriff Fitzsimons mentioned, um, there's gonna be a lot of fire activity. We still wanna limit the amount of traffic up into the community. Um, Ground resources in conjunction with helicopters when necessary are going to continue to work and secure this western edge, the lower flank, to really ensure, you know, the safety of the homes and, and the people down there. Uh, once we're really comfortable with that, then we're going to start looking to the upper edges of the fire and trying to work around the top. Um, what that might look like is heavy equipment in terms of, you know, logging equipment, feller bunches, things of that nature, potentially bulldozers. Uh, a lot of activity. Um, you know, the fire behavior is allowing is allowing us to do more work. So the fire potential has slowed, but the operational tempo of firefighters has actually increased. We can get to work now, uh, and we will. Uh, so that's the general what happened today, the plan for tomorrow and, and moving into the future. Uh, expect to, to see helicopters still flying around the area. They're going to work to help firefighters secure this fire. Um, we're still expecting we're going to have a presence up here for, for some time. Um, I'm anticipating a couple to more weeks. 
So um, expect that, plan for that. Um, we're, we're feeling really good about things and are going to continue to work hard to, to make sure we secure this. Thank you. Él es Eric White, de, con el comando de, de incendio. Este, me está diciendo de que hoy fue un buen día, fue un día muy uh, productivo hoy, porque eh, estamos evaluando el riesgo de, lo, de los bomberos, porque hay riesgos siempre que hay incendios. Um, hay la mayoría de casos fatales son cuando los árboles caen por el por incendio, entonces estamos evaluando a que todos, a la seguridad del área antes de mandar a los, a los bomberos. Este... <coughs> Vamos a, a tirar los, los árboles, vamos a tomar el tiempo para hacerlo, este, vamos a, a revisar el área, a ser minuculosos, pues, tocar el área que no esté caliente para poder empezar a trabajar. Estamos cómodos, nos sentimos cómodos de seguir en, en esta alerta y seguir trabajando. Ya como repito, fuimos a ver todos y nos fuimos a ver el área y nos sentimos cómodos para, para esta vez entrar ya por tierra, una vez que ya... Las aeronaves han estado ahí, ahora nos sentimos cómodos de, de trabajar ya directamente en lo que es a nivel de tierra y combatir el incendio. Estaba él mostrando en el, en el mapa, en la parte de arriba, donde han hecho la revisión, este, eh, inclusive a mano, como para ver la temperatura, cómo está ahí, para poder seguir trabajando, uh, mitigando lo que es el incendio. Ya han... Re, Hicieron removición, estuvieron removiendo todos los combustibles para llegar hasta esa parte de arriba, lo que estaba mostrando en el, en el mapa. O sea, ha hecho mucho trabajo muy duro para poder hacer todo esto. En esa parte de, de arriba de lo que estaba mostrando en el mapa, este, hay muchos árboles que pueden seguir quemándose y pueden caer. Nuevamente, esa es una de las causas de fatalidad de los bomberos más, más común que, que existe. Si es necesario, las aeronaves, lo que es helicópteros y aviones, van a seguir volando y sobrevolando el área para seguir ayudando. Lo que ustedes van a ver, eh, los residentes del área, es de que va a haber mucho equipo pesado, tractores, bulldozers, toda esa, esa maquinaria va a estar trabajando para remover lo que ya está quemado y para poder llegar ahí al área donde está el incendio. El plan es seguir peleando uh, para contener este, este incendio y esto puede tomar un par de semanas más o inclusive un poco más de tiempo, pero el plan es seguir con este, seguir peleando para contener el incendio. Okay, and now I'd like to bring up Summit County Commissioner Josh Blanchard. Good evening, everyone. We are so relieved by the news that our neighbors uh, and friends and community members will be able to go back into their homes uh, tomorrow morning. We know that this evacuation and being away from your homes can cause anxiety and stress, especially during uncertain times. So we're hopeful um, that folks will safely be able to go back into their homes and stay there while the experts continue uh, to fight this fire in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, we are thankful for the cooperation and diligence of so many folks who followed those evacuation orders and cooperated again um, with those on the ground so that the work can get done. And again, we want to express our support and gratitude to the sheriff's office, um, the forest service, and of course the fire districts for the work that they've done uh, so quickly and so diligently to put out this fire. And again, a final thank you to so many folks who continue to reach out, so many folks in the community that reach out to want to offer their support. Um, we are humbled by the ongoing support from so many folks in the community we have an, an, an awesome place and it's times like this when we come together that we truly recognize how special our community is. So thank you um, for everyone for being here. And with that, I'll pass that back over to Eric. Okay, acaba de hablar George Blanche, el comisionado. Dice, solo quiero decir brevemente que nos sentimos muy aliviados. Nos sentimos muy aliviados porque los residentes ya van a poder regresar a sus casas a partir de mañana. Sabemos que cada hora lejos de sus casas causa mucho estrés y es muy, es increíblemente estresante, valga la redundancia. 
Estamos muy agradecidos con la comunidad por ser tan diligentes en seguir las órdenes de evacuación e increíblemente agradecidos con nuestro jefe de policía y el servicio forestal y los distritos de bomberos. Gracias a las personas en la comunidad que han ofrecido su apoyo a todas las personas afectadas por este, por este incendio. No. Great. So I'd say we got two really great pieces of news out of this. Uh, first, that uh, you evacuees will be able to go back to your homes uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, second, as the sheriff announced, this will be our last briefing, so you won't have to listen to me anymore. Um, that's also good news. Um, at this point, I'd like to open the floor for uh, a few questions, uh, such as there may be. And we've got some subject matter experts to help answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have three. First of all, how much has this fire grown from what's shown? That appears to be what was shown yesterday. Secondly, to orient myself, where is the Harmony Trail and where is the Anger Mountain Trail? Mm -hmm. And thirdly, do you have any estimate of containment? Great. Uh, Eric, do you want to take that on? Um, and before I do that, yes. Eric, let me have you translate that question, please. Bueno, pues, este, para comenzar, este, nos sentimos aliviados de que los evacuados ya puedan regresar a sus casas a partir de mañana y que hoy es el último día de reunión informativa que vamos a tener y con eso vamos a empezar la sección de preguntas. Este, acá un señor está preguntando, um, una pregunta en dos partes, ¿cuánto ha crecido este incendio? Este, ¿Dónde está el sendero de, de, de Tarmigan? Porque estaban señalando ahí en el mapa. Y... ¿Cuánto, qué tanto se ha contenido lo que es el incendio en general? Thank you for the questions. Uh, so, very observant. Yes, this is the same app as yesterday. Uh, the reason for that is we're relying on, on most of our fire perimeter data from, it's called the multi-mission aircraft or MMA. Um, it's a very high tech airplane. It flies at, you know, 30 something thousand feet with a bunch of infrared sensors and things like that. Uh, they were unable to fly today due to the level of cloud cover and, and to get accurate data for us. So that's why we don't have a new map created for you today. Um, so in, in terms of actual fire growth, uh, you know, this is still reasonably accurate. There was not a lot of fire growth from yesterday. We had a little bit of growth right as the storms came in. Uh, it grew out just a little bit on, on the southern edge. Once, you know, we had a storm pass, we got some north winds out of it, pushed the fire a little bit south, but it's more or less negligible. So for the most part, the fire has stayed the same size as it was yesterday. Um, so that's, uh, I think that was your first question. Um, second question was the trail system. Is that yeah, correct? Trail. Okay. Um, you know, if you were to come up here, you'd be able to see them. There's, there's some really light dashed lines here. Um, so I believe um, this is the Angler Mountain Trail here and Tarmigan Trail here. I might not have that correct. And, 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 I, yeah. Okay, and I'm, I'm sorry, the third part of the question. Containment. Containment. Thank you. Um, so we're not showing any containment right now. Okay. okay. Um, reason being exactly what I described earlier. Before we're going to show that containment, we really need to get in there and feel secure about what we're doing. We made great progress today. We're going to show some containment tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much or what I anticipate until we see it happen, but we will put out a press release when we start to show that containment. Bueno, esa fue una pregunta muy de mucha observación. Este cuando fuimos a revisar la 
el área todavía estamos hablando de una sección de 30 pies y no habíamos visto crecimiento de fuego este el aire con la tormenta que, que entró empujó el fuego hacia el sur y se ha quedado del mismo tamaño de ayer la segunda respuesta es él mostró acá en el mapa donde están las líneas donde están los senderos Engel Mountain y Tarningham y la, la respuesta para la tercera pregunta es de que no hay contención ahora tenemos que ir a, al área directamente donde está el incendio y asegurarnos bien qué es lo que, cómo está el fuego y ya mañana diremos, tendremos más información, como lo estaba diciendo antes, en lo que son la, las redes sociales y si tiene alguna pregunta, ese es para mí, ¿no? el, este, el número de teléfono que hemos entregado. Um, by the way, uh, for those of you who are watching our live streams on Facebook, feel free to post questions there as well. Um, do we have any other questions from our audience? Yes, ma'am. Um, prior to the fire starting, we had um, some guests planning to come. Will there be any kind of, um, you know, like alert that says uncredentialed people can enter the neighborhood at this time? Hmm. Or how will we know? How to plan from here on out. Sure, that's a that's a good yeah. question for the sheriff here. Uh, do you want to? Um, did you get that, Eric? Una pregunta rápida. Dice que si habrá alertas diciendo si alguien si alguien tiene credenciales para para, para regresar a sus, a sus hogares y el, el, sheriff, el jefe de policía va a responder eso. So thank you for your question. So as you can imagine, there's a million variables to your question, right? And so what we're going to do is, uh, obviously we're going to empower our staffs that are at these uh, road closures to work through these variables. Uh, I would suggest if you know that someone's coming to your house, maybe come down and, and as a credentialed resident, present something to the deputies or the officers that are there to say, hey, you can expect Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, and they're coming to my address at. And even if they don't come then, or if you know when they're coming, just be great to give those uh, deputies or officers a heads up. Okay. Uh, also, before we, before we get any further and before I forget, you know, I, I, this has taken an incredible team effort to get to get to, I hate holding that, to get to where we're at, you know, and, and one more time, uh, you know, for the for the almost 17 years I've been here, um, you know, we've been incredibly lucky that we've worked around the same staff, like Eric and I have worked together for years, Adam and I have worked together for years, and it's the magic of these relationships, you know, with the commissioners, with it with all the town staff, the police chiefs, and I have all, I worked for the police chief at one point. Um, but it, it takes an incredible team. And, and, you know, I always talk about what a unicorn community summit is, but I got to tell you, it's the relationships that make the magic tonight happen that allow me to make this announcement. Uh, the town of Silverthorne has been an incredible host throughout this. Uh, all the police chiefs have contributed and will continue to contribute staff to staffing the road closures in your neighborhoods. Uh, the police chiefs assisted me and their, their staff assisted, you know, deputies doing your evacuations. So none of this is done. There is no I in team, right? And I think it's just important to recognize our community. Uh, John, Steve and I, we've all been, God, I look around and go, and we've all been working together for so long. Um, again, that, that's the magic. So if you wanna believe in the magic in Summit County, there's the magic. So thank you. And again, and thank you all for your cooperation and, and showing us the grace you have. Proud to be your sheriff. Ok, una parte que eh, no mencioné anteriormente es de que para las personas que están eh, viendo la transmisión en, so en lo que es las redes sociales, también pueden hacer sus preguntas, pueden mandar sus preguntas a través de, de ellas. La respuesta a, a esta pregunta es de que hay millones de variables para contestar esta pregunta, porque si las personas que viven en esa área tienen invitados, tienen que hacerles saber a los oficiales que esperan visita, que John Smith va a venir a visitarnos, entonces vamos a, a, 
hay que informarle de que alguien está llegando a visitarlo. En los 17 años que, que he estado aquí trabajando este, con, la misma, con el mismo personal, con los oficiales y todo, eh, toma un grupo grande para poder crear la relación entre todos y eso ayuda y contribuye a, a que todos trabajemos en un caso como este que estamos pasando. También es importante reconocer a la comunidad porque esta es la magia de Sammy County. Esto es, es, aquí estamos demostrando lo que es la magia de Sammy County, cómo la comunidad se integra y trabaja junta, especialmente en situaciones como la que estamos pasando. I uh, understand from Adam that we have an uh, online uh, question. Yeah, this one. Uh, why wait until 10 a.m. Mm. for the lifting of the evacuation? Great question. Why wait until 10 a.m. until the evacuation is lifted? Entonces ya tenemos la primera pregunta en línea por las redes sociales. Y la pregunta es, ¿por qué hay que esperar hasta mañana, a las 10 de la mañana, para levantar lo que es la evacuación? Don't go far here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for the online question. The simple answer is safety. I mean, you know, it's getting dark now. Crews are coming off the hill. They're moving equipment around. Uh, and it's just not safe to have them coming off the mountain and you going up the mountain at the same time. And this way we don't have to do this in the dark. And the reason for 10 a.m. is simply because uh, these crews will start deploying uh, after our 7 a.m. 7 a.m. meeting tomorrow and allows them time again to get up on the mountain before you all start going up on the mountain. So, logistics, simply. Just stick with logistics. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask you guys on that 8 to 10 um, credential um, previous uh, thing is not looked at. No, because you're going home. Okay. Yes. But the 8 to 10, 10. No, no, the 8 to 10 is gone. Okay. Because That's that was to allow you home. temporarily back in. Now you're allowed to go home. Okay. So, we're, we're killing that. Ok, la respuesta para esa pregunta es seguridad, logística y seguridad. Simplemente porque no es seguro hacerlo a esta hora, especialmente cuando ya se está oscureciendo y están los equipos de, uh, trabajando y bajando la montaña y encontrarse ahí. Entonces es pura logística, es pura um, por seguridad. Este, ¿Por qué se hizo a las 10 de la mañana? Es porque nuestro grupo va a ser a las... Va, se va a reunir a las 7 de la mañana y vamos a tener todo listo para entonces y esa va, esa va a ser la hora. Pero básicamente es por logística y por seguridad. Thank you. Don't go far. Okay, I think, uh, do you, one more question? Okay. Um, after a wildfire, I, sometimes there's an increased risk of mudflies, mm. like, like the Glenwood Canyon thing we got from the Grizzly Gulch. Mm -hmm. fire whatever is after the fire activity done um will somebody be assessing that or who'd be qualified to assess whether that's a risk or not yeah um i can probably just tell you part of putting out the fire is also doing the assessment and rehabilitation of uh, a burn area as is needed is that a fair okay adam bianchi yeah. says that's that's the answer <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. We'll evaluate and we, we look at how severe it went or how severe the fire was, what sort of damage it could be to the soils. Um, you know, if we need to, we can put native seed back in there. We'll look at replanting if necessary. We do um, surveys the first year after third and fifth year following fires to meet stocking guidelines for, for trees and things. So we'll be continuing to monitor to ensure restoration is happening. Bueno, la pregunta que el señor tiene es que, como hemos visto en otros lugares, después de un fuego forestal, forestal uh, existe el peligro de deslaves o deslizamientos de tierra. Este, es, eh, la pregunta es si lo van a revisar, quién va a estar uh, monitoreando eso. Este, la respuesta fue de que vamos, la respuesta es esa, vamos a estar monitoreando, vamos a asegurarnos que cuando ya sea seguro, y la otra parte de que lo que agregaron es de que vamos a evaluar el área, vamos a ver lo que es la reforestación en el área para evitar lo que son los deslaves, vamos a, y también vamos a estar monitoreando lo que es la, 
la reforestación y la restauración de lo que es el área para evitar lo que son los deslaves o deslaves, sí. Okay, with, oh, Sawyer? Uh, yeah, I have a, a, just a couple quick ones, Steve. The first is how long will residents have to be credentialed to gain access to that neighborhood? Is that just tomorrow? Is that just the next week? What does that look like? And uh, just curious if there's any presumptive timeline on uh, when any free evacuation notices will be lifted. Great. Um, so that's a good question for the sheriff to take on as well. Um, Erica, did you? Sure. Uh, uh, basically, at, uh, if there was a presumption on how long until we lift the pre-evacuations as well. <coughs> Entonces la pregunta es, ¿cuánto tiempo tienen que tener las credenciales los residentes para poder regresar a sus hogares? Y luego, ¿cuál es el tiempo presumible um, que van a tener esas, esas, o que van a necesitar esas credenciales? Uh, to answer your question, Sawyer, uh, we we re reassess and reevaluate reevaluate this every day, so they'll be in place until we find it's safe to start reducing these, either lifting the pre-evac notices or lifting the the closure of the area. So it's it's a day by day thing. Uh, there was also oh go ahead Eric here. <clears throat> Entonces la la respuesta es de que vamos a estar evaluando lo cada día. Vamos a estar evaluando lo que son las pre-evacuaciones. Vamos a, a, a estar viendo cómo va la situación y vamos la evaluación que vamos a estar haciendo para que con cada día a ver cómo pasa esto. Ok, with that, uh, Kim, sorry. under construction in the evacuation area, when will construction crews potentially be allowed to return? Oh. Do I do the question first? Mm -hmm. Entonces hay otra pregunta en línea donde una persona está preguntando de cuándo, porque tienen una casa en construcción, entonces la pregunta es cuándo van a poder regresar las cuadrillas de, de, de construcción a continuar con la, con esa, valga la redundancia, construcción de esa casa. Ah, yes, thank you. thank you. So there was a question about construction uh, that there's some home. Obviously, we're aware there's some homes under construction up there. And the question was asked online, uh, could construction crews access the homes under construction? The answer is yes. Uh, obviously, we know the, the weather window is closing here for homes and uh, will allow access to those homes as long as they can, you know, verify where they're going. Okay. La respuesta a esa pregunta es sí. Sabemos de que ya la, la, la ventana de tiempo de lo que es el, 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 el clima se está cerrando, pero la respuesta es sí, ya pueden regresar las cuadrillas a seguir en la construcción. All right, with that, let's, um, let's wrap things up here. Um, for those of you, if you have additional questions, again, we are still uh, staffing the public hotline at 970-668-9700 um, for those specific types of questions. Um, we, we thank you all very much for your patience and tolerance and uh, willingness to put up with the inconvenience um, uh, with such uh, graciousness. Um, thanks to the entire team um, for uh, uh, helping us get out the word and for doing the fine work that they've done up on the mountain. Um, Eric, thank you very much. Um, and um, we wish you all a good Steve, night. Social media. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Um, and, and I thought of one more thing. Um, there, uh, remember, uh, if you have not signed up for SC Alert, please do so uh, at scalert.org. That's free text messaging and email service. And that's what the sheriff and we use to let you know of, hey, the 
um, pre-evacuation order has been lifted or conversely, hey, guess what? The fire's flared up and we need to get you out of there again. So we want you attuned to that. Don't um, relax and let down your guard. Um, the also um, uh, follow all of the or follow some social media to the extent that you're looking for um, daily hourly updates of what's the latest news. Um, and I am reminded that uh, this briefing um, will be rebroadcast at 9 p.m. on SCTV. So a lot of information I just loaded you up with you. and we'll bid you good night. But thank you, Eric. Entonces, con esto vamos a terminar. Si tienen preguntas, nuevamente, el número de teléfono es el 970-668-9700. Gracias a todos por su paciencia y tolerancia. Gracias al equipo por hacer su trabajo en estas montañas. De verdad, gracias a todos. Recuerde de que puede ir a, a la página scalert.org y puede tener ahí textos y eh, lo que es el correo electrónico para más alertas de pre -evocación o para avisarles de que cómo está lo que es el incendio. Recuerde de no bajar la guardia, porque como podemos avisarles de que ya está contenido el fuego, que ya se apagó, como también podemos decirles de que el fuego volvió, que volvió a encenderse. Así que, por favor, este, esté pendiente de las alertas, siga siempre lo que es, son las redes sociales. Muchas gracias por su atención y gracias a todos por su colaboración. Gracias.